Cowboy Halston is able to use his action to pull out huge spells like Thunderbolt and then use his bonus action to do weapon attacks at the same time. His spike growth is augmented with a bunch of equipment to inflict debuffs to anybody who takes a step, reverb, radiant, or encrusted with ice, anything you want or all of them at the same time. He'll use his whip to pull people into his terrain and then quick draw on them now that it's buffed from actually using his cantrip. Completely immune to difficult terrain or any kind of entanglement, he's able to be the most mobile character there and then just make everything a hellscape for everyone else. It's lonely out on the range, but we'll use Polymorph to build up our own herd, rendering our enemies useless but adorable. Because of the sword he has, his crossbows have a chance of making them blind. But if all else fails, you can always turn into a cave bear. Big thank you to Baljeet405 for sending in the request. I made this video a long time ago, but I like the build so much that I put it on house in, in a couple of runs actually. And a bunch of people asked for a roll for redo on it, so I figured, what a great time. What origin character do you think I'm gonna do next? Let me know in the comments. Until then, I'll see you at the end. The first level we're gonna take is actually fighter, mostly because all the proficiencies. Constitution proficiency is gonna be super helpful because we'll have a lot of terrain type spells running while you're fighting, and also all of the weapon proficiencies that we'll need. Hand crossbow would come to rogue if you picked it as your first level, and we're probably not going to do that, so. This tick here is a lot of things, but while we're here, we're also gonna pick up the two weapon fighting style. It's gonna allow us to add our dexterity bonus to our offhand shots, and that's gonna be a lot of the damage. Ability scores are gonna be two different ones, honestly. If you're starting off at level one, I definitely suggest making your wisdom and your dexterity 16, and then your constitution 14, and then dumping strength or intelligence. Later on in act one, when you find the gloves of dexterity, you might wanna consider reskinning and then putting all of your points into constitution and wisdom, but that's a hard choice. There's a lot of gloves that match this build really, really well, so it's all up to you. But till then, definitely 16 both those scores. Our next level is gonna go into druid. Nothing really special on the first level besides the spells. Definitely get Entangle and get Healing Word. Long Strider is also very helpful. Entangle is gonna make them make a strength saving throw or they're gonna be restrained, giving everybody advantage to hit them. Later in this, you're gonna be completely immune to the Entangle, so you can be all up in it. But it's a really short area of effect. There's gonna be a lot better ones later. Next level in Druid opens up our circle. We're gonna pick Way of the Land. Immediately, it doesn't give us much besides unlocking our wild shape. Halston is able to wild shape into a cave bear. Other ones are not. Cave bear has a multi attack and can't hit more than once immediately. It's really, really, really good fallback if you're low on HP. It also gives us a skill called Natural Recovery, which is the same as Arcane Recovery that wizards get. It just lets us get back spell slots out of battle. Our next level in Druid opens up our first Way of the Land choice. And when you look at these, definitely go for the choice choices that come with spells that druids don't usually get. You could go full cowboy and just pick grassland each time, but I heavily suggest picking coast. Comes with mirror image and misty step, two spells druid does not get, and both of them are absolutely dope. Mirror image is gonna save you three hits, basically, while misty step is gonna help you be more mobile and then get you out of situations or into situations. This level also unlocks second level druid spells, and spike growth is among them. Spike growth is the spell that I took for granted when I first started playing this game. It is incredibly awesome. Every time someone moves in your area of spike growth, they take 2d4 piercing damage, and this stuff just totally racks up. And all of this attack counts as a magical attack from you, so you can equip things like the Boots of Stormy Clamor that inflict reverberation for two stacks every time you hit someone with a magic attack or the coruscation ring that puts radiant orb on someone every time you use the magic attack or the cold brim hat that puts encrusted with ice on anybody that you put a condition on it's just awesome it's really great it can mess up an entire group of people our next level is going to be force and druid giving us a feat and we're going to pick sharpshooter this is going to add 10 damage to our offhand attacks but it's going to make them difficult to actually land it's going to minus five off that but we have spells to help with that very Fire was a level 1 spell that makes it advantage for you to hit anybody, entangle if they're restrained and you're close enough you'll have advantage to hit them, or you can put on the Risky Ring. The Risky Ring can be purchased from the Bloodmancer at Moonrise Towers and makes all of your attacks at advantage but all your saves at disadvantage so it's a big big downside but it makes you an absolute god. Our next level is going to open up third level druid spells like Plant Growth 
which I'll talk about in a second. And our next circle of land choice. Now again, there are a bunch of choices here. Some are spells that you already know, and some are spells that you don't know. I highly suggest picking the mountain path. It comes with lightning bolt and fly. Both spells you won't learn and are incredibly helpful. Lightning Bolt is basically Fireball, but in a line. And since we're going to be using Plant Growth and Entangle, we don't want to really use Fire. So this does that while keeping your Plant Growth up. And Plant Growth totally destroys their movement. It quarters it, actually, making it incredibly difficult for them to move around. But in one more level, we can walk through it completely free. Which brings us to our 6th level in Druid, unlocking Landstride. We are now completely immune to any difficult terrain that we create or otherwise. Spike growth doesn't hurt us anymore, plant growth won't slow us down, and Tangle won't even touch us. We're going to take a break from Druid here in a bit and jump right into Rogue. First level in Rogue is going to unlock a couple of proficiencies for us, but also give us our ability to sneak attack. Our next level in Rogue is going to unlock our three cunning actions, or bonus actions abilities to hide and dash. And our next level in Rogue is going to unlock our subclass, which is going to pick Thief for Fast Hands. We'll have two bonus actions, and since we're doing a bunch of spike damage on our bonus action with our hand crossbow, we now get to shoot twice. Our next level is going to be in Rogue still to pick up a Thief to move our Wisdom up to 18. Wisdom is going to be more important here. We're going to be doing a lot of damage and a lot of spells and healing and all that fun stuff on our main action. And our bonus action is going to be buffed up with things like the Risky Ring. So a plus one to hit and a plus one to damage isn't going to do as much help as having our spell save DC being higher. Our next level is going to jump back into Druid. Our 7th level in Druid unlocks 4th level spells, giving us Polymorph. Polymorph lets us change one target into a sheep for a specific amount of turns, it's concentration, and it is nowhere near as dope as it is in 5e. But it fits the cowboy theme so perfectly that I will always pick it, and I will always turn people into sheep every fight I can. There's another choice here for your circle of the land. I definitely would pick the choice that comes with greater invisibility. That's definitely not a druid spell, and because our dexterity is super high, and if you put expertise into stealth, you could keep greater invisibility up for quite a long time. And now into equipment for hand crossbows. Unfortunately, we are not graced in this game to have a bunch of awesome legendary hand crossbows. We only have about two or three technically. But beginning of the game, the first thing you need to be doing is hunting down any cran crossbows at all. Check Damon. Damon usually has one for me. Also the Zentium Trader in the caves. They typically have one. In the honor run that I'm currently playing, uh, Derelith had two plus one hand crossbows, and I was level five. Well, I wasn't even level five yet, actually. I was there early to pick up the Psychic Sparks necklace. Anyway, you have to hunt these down and get them on as soon as possible, because at level one, you're able to use your bonus action to pop these off, only if you have two equipped. And because your oft hand is being used for your bonus action, make sure that you equip your best crossbow in the second slot. Nair Mister is a really good hand crossbow. You can buy it from the Zentia Merchant at Moonrise, but the only plus two hand crossbow that I can find that's special in any way is the Hellfire crossbow that Young Gear drops if you kill him. Problem is, we don't really want to play with fire because of plant growth and all that stuff. Fortunately, it doesn't really cause burning unless you are hidden. But Near Mister's damage is force, bypassing a bunch of different resistances. Let's talk about the hat. I have searched this game for a cowboy-like hat for her a long time, and I finally found it. Janice's hat is sealed in her vault. You have to take her key from her. She keeps it in her pockets. Take that out. In Act 3, run to the bank and open it up. You'll find it. It's a very rare hat that gives you advantage on persuasion and deception checks. It's very, very cool. Until I got that, literally, no joke, I wore the floppy hat that I found on the beach. <laughs> It was the closest thing I could find. Going off brand, I definitely would put on the hat of Arcane Equity. Every time you make a weapon attack, you get Arcane Equity, which hires your spell saved attack and DC. It's super valuable, and it's an awesome hat to put on any kind of battle mage. You can find it at the Stonemasons Guild in Act 2. 
rings. I, I mentioned the risky ring in the equipment, but if you jump forward, the risky ring gives you advantage on all your attacks, but gives you disadvantage on all your saves, so it makes it risky. You can buy that from the Blood Mancer and Moonrise Towers. The other ring slot, I would put the Ring of Arcane Synergy. You can find that at the Crush. Every time you use your Thorn Whip to yank people into your spike growth, you will then add your Wisdom on a fire to all your weapon attacks, including your hand crossbows. It's a totally awesome fit for this build. The Coruscation Ring is also a really good fit for this build. That way, Radiant Orb would be applied to anyone in your spike growth area, along with the Boots of Stormy Clamor, adding reverberation to your spike growth in that area. And those boots in ring gets used in a lot of builds, including mine. I mean, at least one of them is in every build, but I have an excuse this time. The Boots of Stormy Clamor look the most like cowboy boots, so there. When it comes to gloves in this game though, there are so many different ones to choose from, it's really hard. The first gloves I suggest are the Gloves of Archery. They're gonna add plus two to all your archery ranged attacks, and that does count for crossbows, but the proficiencies that give only count for short bows and long bows. You can buy those at the Goblin Camp. The Gloves of Dexterity will let you reset your stats so that you can have a higher constitution and a higher wisdom, so those would be incredibly helpful. You can find those at the Crush and buy them from the Trader. The Gloves of the Battle Mage can be found in Act 2 in the Toll House. Every time you inflict a condition with a weapon attack, you gain more arcane unity. Oh, you can also beef up your Thorn Whip with the Spell Might Gloves. You can do the Clown Quest or just steal them from Lucretius at the Circus. These will add a D8 to your whip, but like Sharpshooter, take a negative 5 to that attack. Hey, I hope you guys like the build. Thanks again, Balji405, for sending that request in, and thanks again for everybody for telling me that I should do another deep dive on this build. It's really fun. I suggest you guys trying it. At the very least, definitely put two crossbows on somebody not using their bonus action. That way, they can spend their bonus action shooting somebody instead of, you know, letting it waste. I like to thank all my sponsors, but especially these guys right here. All the people on the adventure or higher tier in the membership get their names in the last credits and they get to be automatically put into a raffle that pulls every Sunday. This Sunday I'm giving away my new shirt, Crown of Madness. Next week's gonna be my new rendition for iBite. I'm really excited about it. It came out very, very, very well. But the next spells that get made are gonna be chosen by the people you see on the screen here. I'm gonna take all the ideas that I get from comments and videos, put them into the post for them to choose their favorite, and then that's gonna be my next project. If you want to be part of that list, you can click the link in the description. And thank you very much guys for watching my videos. I appreciate it a lot. Goodbye. Bye.